Hey everybody, I play Massive. This is Randy Price of ArenaNet, and we're here to show you Good Wars 2. You guys know that we've sold uh, well over six million units uh, of Guild Wars, and over half of that uh, has been in Europe. Europe is a hugely important territory for us. We have millions of fans in Europe, across Europe, and Germany is also uh, absolutely awesome for us. When we thought about where we wanted to unveil Guild Wars 2 um, to the public for the first time and actually show a playable hands-on demo, um, you know, we thought about E3. Uh, it's a great, great show, but it's, it's press and business only. Gamescom, the perfect balance of everything we want. Awesome press, awesome partners of ours. Um, also, you know, millions of our fans are able to come here and enjoy um, and you know, have been here with, uh, with the, or the European side of our business is, is really exciting for us. So, you know, we're actually going to spend some time uh, and walk you guys through the human starting area of Guild Wars 2. Uh, show you this, that starting experience. We're also going to show you uh, a mid-level char experience. Uh, all of you who played Guild Wars 1, you know that in Guild Wars 1, the char race was our, our antagonist. Um, this guy's killed millions of char in his life. Um, I've killed thousands of char. Um, and from, from our standpoint, um, you know, part of the, the lore of Guild Wars 2 really ties into why you're able to play the char and why you're able to play actually five races in Guild Wars 2. So also you're able to play Norn, Asura, and Silvari. Um, you, also, you also probably know that um, 250 years have now passed since Guild Wars 1, the events of Guild Wars 1 to Guild Wars 2. And what's happened in the world is that the Elder Dragons have awoken and they're actually, they've actually um, devastated the land they've, and they've actually you know, caused continental shifts such that you know, cities have come out of the water. Uh, different areas of, of the land have been branded and scourged by them. Um, so the story of Guild Wars 2 is about how the five races have to come together. They have to come together to be able to uh, combat the, um, the Elder Dragons. And you, the player, play an integral role in this. You are, uh, play the role of a hero and, and you, create, you create your personal story which helps uh, to help forge an alliance between the five races to be able to combat the dragons. So <clears throat> we're actually going to, I want you guys to understand how we have stepped back from We've stepped back from kind of everything that you know about MMORPGs and really thought about in, in what, we what we try to do at ArenaNet is to innovate. And with Guild Wars 2, there's kind of three main components I really want you to be looking out for um, when we go through the demo. It's the things that we really think are, are, are the innovations that are going to take Guild Wars 2 and make, enable us to be able to present to you um, the best MMORPG that you've ever played. Um, in a game that can appeal not only to your hardcore MMO players, but also to the broader gaming audience. Uh, we're bringing the RPG back into MMORPGs, and we're doing that uh, with the way that we tell personal stories in the game. Uh, the way that you matter, the way that your choices um, affect your story as, as you weave through the world. Um, we also do that, we also are innovating with our dynamic event system. Um, essentially, we want a living, breathing world where you see things going on, you hear things going on, and you as a player choose whether or not you want to engage. Um, think about uh, smoke billowing up over a hillside and you go to the top of the hill and you look down and you see that uh, creatures are attacking a village. Um, okay, I see that. I can go down there and get, in, get engaged in it, uh, try to battle off these creatures. And based upon the outcome of that, uh, engagement, new events will spawn and chain onto that. Um, and that's kind of a core, a core part where we don't make you, th you know, find the NPC with the bang over his head, click on him, uh, be confronted with a wall of text that you don't read, um, tells you to go to kill 10 of something, you run out in the world and you see that 10 of something sitting around and you kill them and you head back to the quest giver and check in and, and see another wall of text that you don't read. Those traditional quests, we don't, we don't do them in Guild Wars 2. It's all about our dynamic events and how that blends with our, also your personal story. The third component for us is combat, making combat a visceral experience, making it visually compelling, making it something that you as a player control and engage in dramatically. Um, and so, we'll, again, we'll really, when Eric walks through uh, a lot more uh, human, and we're going to start to see some of these elements as we move here. So we're going to play a human female, 
and one of the first, first questions, we've got to choose our profession. In Guild Wars 2, we have eight different professions, four of which we've already announced. So we have um, Warrior, Ranger, Necromancer, and Elementalist. Today for the demo, we're choosing Elementalist. We have extensive character customization in the game. Extensive. Uh, we could take half an hour showing it to you, so what, for purposes of this demo, we want to concentrate on some other things, so we've randomized what to, who your character is at this point. Okay, this is kind of the core cool part of character creation, is now we're going to enter into uh, a series of questions that really start to form the foundation of who you are. It's your personal biography. We're going we're gonna to choose some answers to questions that, that will actually impact the story your story as you adventure through the world. So the first question actually has to do with uh, a visual part of your character. The second is choosing um, a starting disposition of your character and whether or not um, you're charming, dignified, or ferocious. And as you also adventure in the world, you're going to be confronted with a number of choices and decisions that uh, are going to impact your personality and help craft who you are as a player. And that will actually have impacts on, on how NPCs interact with you and the sorts, of, the sorts of ways that you would interact with your personal story. So Matthew here has chosen uh, Charming, as we know he's very charming. Uh, also, uh, we want to talk a little, we want you to be able to choose your uh, a starting part of your background. Were you raised by common folk? Were you raised uh, by the nobility? Or were you raised in the streets? Um, this actually has a direct impact even as soon as the opening cinematic that we will play for your human experience. Um, it has further reaching impacts in the world. Like a couple of other questions that, that Matthew's going to uh, watch through here, they have further reaching impacts in the world as you adventure and as we tell your story. So this is now your biography to this point. Again, that foundation. Um, and as you adventure, your, your biography will grow and evolve with you. The cool thing is that, you know, if you were to compare your biography with another player, you know, once you've adventured through the game a bit, they're going to be drastically different. Um, and there is just a, a, a many avenues and branches that can come off that you can experience through the game. So now we're going to actually click through and we're going to have the opening cinematic for Guild Wars 2 for a human race. The human race once ruled Tyria. Now, we struggle to hold our ground. We've been defeated, driven back, and broken. But we will not surrender. So many nations have fallen. Only Krita still stands. Our faith is strong. Despite this is actually going to transition into showing you a customized part of the cinematic based upon your With biography courage, and what you've previously chosen. We'll make our stand in divinity's reach. The city is my home. I was born to common folk, just one among many. My friends and I don't seek attention or glory. It's hard enough making ends meet. But I believe we can still shape a brighter world out of the ashes of the past. Today, I stepped outside of Divinity's Reach to see the world. But when I arrived in Shaymor, the town was under siege by centaurs. Innocent villagers are in danger. Someone has to help. We can't go on living our lives in fear. I have to fight. I have to make a stand. This is my story. We're going to move into the game world. I'm going to hand it off to Eric. Before I do that, I want to, do, I want to say one more thing about uh, our art style. 
We have over 70 artists at Reunet, and they take immense pride in, uh, in what, how visually compelling uh, Guild Wars 2 and, and our art is. Um, you, you see in the opening cinematic, and you'll see as, as within the world, um, our art is about having a painterly, handcrafted style to, to all of it. You can even see in the UI the painterly feel to it. You see in the cinematic that um, you, know, you see a lot of our concept art that is interwoven, you know, 2D concept art interwoven with our 3D models. A lot of our concept art that is interwoven, you know, 2D concept art interwoven with our 3D models. Eric is going to show you a number of vistas in the game that are truly unbelievable Please and show the detail out. that our artists put into everything that we create in the game. So now I'll turn it over to Eric to walk us through the gameplay. Thanks, Randy. So uh, here we have our tutorial experience. Um, one of the things that we wanted to Please accomplish with our tutorial is to put players in immediately um, exciting and sort of uh, dangerous situation. So uh, you notice we're continuing our personal story. You can tell when we're continuing our personal story with, by the uh, presence of that green Everybody starburst. We can protect you at the end. And so, um, once again, we wanted uh, the players to, uh, you know, be in sort of an immediate, exciting situation. Uh, centaurs are attacking the town, and it's up to the player to uh, help the people of the town, get them to safety, and uh, save the day. You'll notice this is, uh, uh, this is not an instanced area. This is a multiplayer area. You'll see other players running around. Uh, a couple things to note about our combat, as you see Matthew engaging some centaurs. Uh, our combat, we wanted to be very much about positioning and about um, uh, about being in the right place in relative to uh, where your opponent is. And to facilitate that, we have a few things like uh, most of our abilities and skills can be used while you're moving. Uh, we wanted to do that to maintain kind of the flow of combat so that you weren't constantly held in place by things you were doing. You'll also notice Matthew uh, dodging enemy attacks. You can dodge really simply by double tapping in any direction. Um, you'll also see things like... Uh, Thank you so much. You'll also see things and notice that we have no auto attack. Whenever Matthew attacks, um, it's because he's used a skill explicitly. And uh, if he wants to, uh, he can right-click a skill and it will automatically execute whenever it becomes available. Um, but he doesn't need to do that. And um, we did that so that our combat would be much more immediate um, and feel more um, sort of action-y. We'll head over to the end now to uh, see what's going on. Stay calm, stay alert. You must be the lifesaver everyone's talking about. Whoever you are, thanks for sending those villagers here. We'll keep them safe. Sergeant, there are more centaurs on the other side of town. Captain Thackeray's calling for reinforcements at the garrison. If he's calling for help, it must be serious, but I can't spare anyone. I'll go. Captain Thackeray's never failed Divinity's reach. If I can help him, I will. Balthazar bless you. That's the spirit that'll win this war. Good luck. So this is, um, as Randy mentioned before, uh, one of the ways that we tell our story is through cutscenes. And you'll note, similar to kind of the opening cutscene, we use a mix of 2D and 3D uh, elements. <clears throat> so as we head to the garrison, um, I wanted to point out a few things. So you'll notice the uh, weather. Um, it's raining, it's thundering, it's storming. Um, we have this particular area set that way so um, that we can kind of heighten the mood of danger and excitement in this initial area. But once you get out into the uh, open world, um, you'll see weather effects that change. Um, you'll see events that affect weather. Um, for example, in one area there's an event that uh, kicks off a giant blizzard. Um, things like that. You'll also notice we have a night and day cycle in the game. Um, the and are in the garrison. Rally that the also affects what uh, events are available.